Well, uh, thank you very much. And yeah, uh, in this presentation, I'm going to be talking about one of the cases where we can apply machine learning methods in a numerical simulation framework. Specifically, I'm going to be introducing the one-step self-simulation method, which is a novel approach for running machine for uh, training machine learning constitutive models from experimental data. And this is part of our project we are developing at UCD Center for Mechanics at the University College Dublin in Ireland, in collaboration with Drs. Chelikin, Cunningham, and Dr. Philip Cardiff. And uh, this is a project related. This is a project from the solid mechanics field. Oh, well, sorry. This is a break from the solids mechanic field. In particular, we're targeting the elastoplastic deformation. And as we know, in, in a typical numerical simulation framework, we combine many ma mathematical components to produce results, such as the ones you can see on the right-hand side of the screen, which are basically fields of variables uh, over do uh, domain and over time. And one of the crucial components that we need to get that, those results uh, is the material model or the constitutive relation. In the context of elastoplasticity, there is no universal material model that is applicable to all of the all of the materials or all of the deformation regimes. So the usual practice in engineering consists of assuming a material model that is and using that material model to run the simulations. But of course, this introduces uncertainty in the simulations. And what we want to do is to eliminate or at least reduce the uncertainty associated with the material model or with the assumption of the material model. And we, we are aiming to do this by replacing the assumed material model with a machine learning model that will be trained directly from experimental results. However, this poses a major challenge, and that challenge is related to This poses a major challenge, and the challenge is in, in related to the momentum equation, which is at the core of our solution process. And as part of the, of the momentum equation, we need to implement the material model calculations. And in, the, in this context, the material model is a relation between a stress and a strain. So it means that the machine learning model that we are looking for ideally would map the components of the strain tensor uh, to the components of the stress tensor. So it would take the strain as input and it would produce the stress as output. But it also poses a major challenge, which is related to the, the training of such machine learning model. Uh, a supervised algorithm for training this machine learning model would require that we uh, measure pairs or pairs of measured strains, uh, a strain to a stress. And uh, even though in a mechanical test we can measure the strains, the strain field, we cannot measure the stress field, even though we can measure the loads at the boundaries. So if we cannot measure the stress, the stress field, we cannot create the training data set that we need for running, uh, for constructing the, the training data set made of, of strain stress pairs. So if we cannot construct this, what, how do we train the machine learning model that we want to use as a surrogate model for the material, for the elastoplastic behavior? And uh, one of the solutions we found in the literature is called the self-sim or autoprogressive algorithm which is an inverse method that basically assumes or, or uh, starts with a, an assumed machine learning model and that machine learning model is trained with linear elastic data and then with that machine learning with that machine learning model trained on elastic data two different simulations are run the first simulation in the first simulation the the measured loads or the experimental loads are applied as boundary conditions and in the second simulation the measured or or the experimental displacements are applied as boundary conditions. And the idea of this algorithm is that the result, the stress field from the first simulation will, will be similar to the expected stress field. And the strain field from the second simulation will be uh, similar to the expected or real strain field. Therefore, with the stresses from the first simulation and with the strains from the second simulation, uh, the, the pairs, the strain stress pairs required to train the machine learning model are constructed and with those pairs the machine learning the initially linear elastic machine machine learning model is retrained and the process is repeated until convergence is achieved and uh, we have introduced we have introduced a modification in this algorithm to to where we are basically replacing the strains the strains obtained in the second simulation with the experimentally measured a strain field or the field that we will measure in a mechanical experiment uh, using techniques such as digital image correlation. 
By doing this, we are aiming at both reducing the computational effort and also increasing the efficiency of the method by increasing the number of real uh, data points that we are using. So this is the, and basically this is the method I'm gonna be talking about in this presentation, the one-step self-simulation algorithm. So in under this method, we still have to perform one simulation, which is the one where we are applying the measured loads as boundary conditions. And uh, we're doing that in open form. And, uh, uh, specifically, our mechanic solver is an open foam toolbox solid for foam, and but our machine learning models are implemented in Python. And the way we're doing this is that we created a class for solid for foam. We called it Python Pal Linear Elastic Mises Plastic, because it, the base class for this subclass is Linear Elastic Mises Plastic. But also we are using the Python Pal, which is uh, the Python Pal or Python Pal for foam, which is a library that we introduced a couple of open foam workshops ago. And uh, basically what we're doing is that even though our mechanical solver is open form, which is written in C++, in this, within this sub subclass, we're implementing the material model calculations in Python. And the interoperability between both languages is provided by the Python PAL. Uh, just a brief recap on the Python PAL. This is a library, as I said, that we introduced a couple of open form workshops ago. And basically what it, it allows us to run Python codes in open form. Or, or, and also it allows us to manipulate open form fields using Python libraries such as, ten, such as TensorFlow, Keras, or any other. And uh, the, it has a, the convenient characteristic that it, it doesn't involve extra computing time. And also it doesn't require the code translation between Python and open form. And, uh, and the, the way it works is, is very simple. It, uh, in the background, it is using a Python library called PyBind11 to, PyBind 11 to create a Python interpreter that is uh, created and held in the background by OpenFOAM. And whenever we need to do something on an open form, on open form data, we simply use the, this library to transfer it to the Python interpreter, execute the Python code that we need to execute, and retrieve it back to the OpenFOAM side. And as I said, all of this is done with no with no uh, extra computing time. So this is just a brief example on, on where we are uh, using as a recap of how to use the open the Python PAL for, a, for a, an application, for a real application. And we simply modified the IcoFOAM. We created a solver called Python PAL IcoFOAM. And we modified IcoFOAM in such a way that once the simulation is completed, we pass the velocity field to the Python side using Python PAL for FOAM. And then uh, it, in the Python side, we calculate the specific kinetic energy, and then we retrieve it back to open font, to the open font side where it is where the results are printed. Uh, these are the steps to achieve that. They are very simple. First, we create a, a specific kinetic energy field in open form, which is a boilerplate code, basically. Then we include the pythonpal.h file. As I said, the pythonpal is just a, a header-only library, so we include it in, in our solver very easily. Then we create an object of the Python PAL class. In this case, I called it my Python PAL, and it receives um, an one of the attributes is the name of the Python of, of a Python script. And in that Python script, we are going to write all the Python functions that we are going to use on open, in open form. In this case, it is only we are only using one Python function, which is calculate key and receives a field. And basically this function receives the field and returns the field squared divided by two. Uh, in the case of, of course, if the field is velocity field, it is it will return the specific kinetic energy field. Then we very simple we do two very simple commands. We pass the or we pass the velocity field and the specific kinetic energy field from this open form side to the Python pal side or to the Python interpreter, and using Python code, very simple Python code, we simply order or command the execution of the function that I did just defined, calculate key. With the with the specific with the velocity field, and the result of that is assigned to the specific kinetic energy field, which is then printed in up in the from the open side. I know that it might be a little tricky to get all, all to get uh, how it works or how to use this tool in an open form setup from this presentation. However, uh, we have also prepared some additional materials, and one of them is the video tutorial where I perform all the steps required to achieve this. It's a very short video uh, that you can find at this address, or you, or you can simply uh, reach, reach me out or Dr. Cardiff, and we will be more than happy to, to help with that. And uh, also we have set up a website for the Python Pal for Fun, where you, can, you, you, will be, you will find all the information you need in case you, need, you are interested in running up, uh, Python codes in OpenFOAM using this tool. 
And then back to our to our to the main object of this presentation, which was the implementation that we are that we got or we created for for the one step self team algorithm. We are doing that in or we are implemented it we implemented it in Python, but from Python we are executing and controlling the execution of all of the uh, open phone simulations that we need to be done. And basically, I am not showing. I am showing on the slide the most important steps of the script. But of course, the controls, the control structures, and the decision mechanisms are not shown here. I'm just showing the most important steps. But here you can see that there is a function. The first, the first command is there is a function called terminal, which basically triggers the execution of a, of bash code with, from Python. And with this line, a very simple line, we are uh, we are calling a sub uh, a sub script that sets up and trains the machine learning model with linear elastic data. Then uh, at, later in the code, we are simply, again, uh, using the terminal function to, to run Python, uh, to run open form code. This is basically the, the command where we are running the simulation and the simulation where the known loads or the measured loads are applied as boundary conditions. Then once the simulation is completed, as I said, we need the strain field, the stress field from that simulation. So but we need it in Python because our machine learning models are implemented in Python. So we use the Python pal to simply save the stress field that we obtain from the simulation in a format that is readable from Python. In this case, it, it, the, the Sigma field, which contains the stress field from the simulation, can, is saved in a sigma.mpy uh, file that is directly readable from Python. And once we have done that, it is very simple to use this file and the epsilon or the strain field that we require to retrain the machine learning model. Uh, so basically, we are performing, we are implementing this in Python, but from within Python, we are executing the the or we are triggering the execution of the uh, required open form simulations. Um, we are te we already tested this method on an elastoplastic deformation, and uh, the the machine learning model that we are using to uh, to acquire the elastoplastic behavior is a uh, recurrent neural network with two hidden layers. One of them is GRU, and the other one is a fully connected layer. And basically, it takes at, as inputs the strain tensor at the current time step, and it produces at, uh, 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 as output the stress tensor at the current time step. And of course, as part of the process, some state variables are held uh, internally by the by the neural network. Again, I'm showing here just some of the key simulation steps. You can see here that I am simply passing to the Python side, uh, to passing from the open phone side to Python, a strain field, a stress field, and the states. And also, I am uh, triggering the execution of the predict function, and predict basically uh, takes or fits the neural network with the strains and, and get and forces it to calculate the stress. So this is basically where the where the uh, material model calculations are implemented. We tested this. We used that recurrent neural network as the material model for uh, for a simple case to test our implementation. In this case, this is a very simple case where a steel plate is a stuck is a stuck to a wall and uh, a traction is applied at one of the boundaries. And uh, it, as I said, as part of our one-step self sim algorithm, the recurrent neural network is initialized with linear elastic data, and we are assuming that the expected behavior is not given in is not given by a, by an experiment. Instead, it is given by a, by a simulation where we have applied an isotropic hardening plastic behavior. So ideally, what what should happen after we apply the one-step self sim algorithm is that the recurrent neural network that initially was linear elastic should learn the isotropic hardening behavior, starting from linear elasticity. And uh, since this is a since this is a two D simulation, we are neglecting the components in the side direction. So our machine learning model is taking three components of a strain as input and three components of a stress as output. Uh, we are limiting the number of iterations to 50. And, and so this is a, the representation of our machine learning model. And I can show some results. These results are given at the final time step. And each point corresponds to a material point, to the results from a material point in the, in the mesh or in the simulation. The red and blue, and you can see on the slide, I have the two uh, the displacement component, the, Two components of the displacement vector, and uh, you can see that the, what you are seeing is 
in red or on purple, you can see the results. If the simulation were was, was run, or if we run a simulation using an, a linear elastic model, and in green, the green points represent the result from our simulation after we applied one step self simulation. So basically, basically our model went, our model started being being in the red or being represented by the red, the red points. And after the application of our model of our approach, it uh, it became the uh, the results became those of the green points. And the expected results are given by the blue line. So you can see that the green points and the blue line, uh, there is a very good agreement for both components of the displacement vector. Uh, if you compare the green and the blue lines, and also if you see the point where it began, the point where, where the machine learning model was trained originally, where, where it's given by the red points. So we can state that our initially linear elastic recurrent neural network uh, became our an elastoplastic neural network. And also if we analyze other results, such as the components of the strain tensor, uh, we get similar results. The final green points are very close in very good agreement with the blue line. And also it's the same it's the same case for the stress result. So it means that uh, that our neural network uh, went from elastic to elastoplastic after the application of our method. And also, and this is the final case, the final the final test case, we took the neural network that we obtained in the previous problem and we applied in a different simulation problem. So in we are simulating the same plate, but this time with a hole. So this modifies the fields of the results because of the stress concentration factors and, and that we are expecting. But we are the, the machine learning model in this case will be give, will be given by by the machine learning model that we obtained in the previous problem. So we are not up, we are not training uh, the machine learning model in in any way in this case. We are just applying the machine learning model that we already have. And again, the expected behavior is given by isotropic hardening uh, behavior. So and again, if we compare the results at the final time step, uh, you can see in red the points that we would get if the simulation was run uh, elastically. But in green, you can see the results corresponding to uh, the simulation using the, the machine learning model that we trained in the previous problem. And in blue, in the blue line, you can see the expected results. And again, the again the agreement is very good, which means that uh, which for us is a proof that our machine learning model has can be used or reused in on, in problems where the data has not been seen at training stage. We can we get similar results for the components of the strain tensor. Again, the, the comparison between the green points and the blue line is good, especially if we take into account the, the linear elastic behavior. And it's the same for the stress tensor, for the components of the stress tensor. So uh, with this, I finish my presentation. Uh, in the future work, we are we are aiming to address more complex behavior, such as anisotropy, and also we would like to try more complex machine learning models. We we use our very uh, simple frequent neural network, uh, so we think that if we use a more complex model, machine learning model, we should be able to tackle uh, more complex plastic behavior, and also we want to uh, address the frame indifference of the machine learning based models. So with that. Uh, I can I conclude my presentation. Thank you to to all those uh, bodies that uh, that are supporting this project, and thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for your last presentation. And any questions? Okay. Uh, I have one question. Uh, could you tell more details about your neural network uh, architecture, and also uh, how about the speed up factor of the of your uh your model uh, compared to the uh, traditional open form okay sorry can you can you repeat the question please uh could you tell tell us more about your neural network architecture such as the uh how many uh neurons in the yeah. hidden layer and yeah how do you design the loss function of this yeah, so for the loss function, we're using we I tested several functions, but with with several loss functions, but with MSC or it it worked very it was it worked properly, and also in terms of the architecture of the neural network, we have we're using 
we're using we have two hidden layers one of them is gru and the other one is a uh, fully connected layer and both of them uh, the only constraint i am setting uh, for both of them is that they they should have the same number of nodes so they have 10 and 10. and uh however i i tested with several they tested with 12 i tested with 15 and it always worked i just wanted my model to be as small as possible so i reduced the number to uh, to 10. and uh the other part of your question was related to the speed up, I think. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. So, sorry. Yeah. So, let's say in this case, I was more. I was proving the con the con the concept of the one step self simulation algorithm. So, I even though I have measured the time step, I didn't measure. I, I didn't do the benchmark because I let's say that uh, at this stage, my my target was to see if my is if this method, this inverse method that we are proposing works. So I I could not tell you how how this is how much the speed up uh, from this compared to doing it in, in pure C plus plus or in that implementation would be, even though I have some sort of measures measurements for the timing. Okay, thank you. I understand. Okay, thank you. Uh, 